Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. Kim from episode 125 has a follow-up question. She's overall doing better, but it still takes her a long time to fall asleep and she has very superficial sleep and she's wondering, will this pattern ever break? And I am very confident it will. Just keep on going, Kim. Super nice having you back here. <laughs> really happy you're tuned in. And if you're new to the channel, uh, I hope you really find something of value to you here. Now, um, Kim uh, has, uh, uh, you know, contributed a lot to this channel, specifically episode 125. And there's another uh, episode, I forget the number, but uh, uh, I just titled it like Keep on Kim that time. Uh, so if you want some more background, you can definitely uh, tune into those episodes. Now, briefly, uh, she contacted me like about three weeks ago after having gone like three nights without sleeping. I was very optimistic that she could just kind of like uh, get back on track. Didn't happen. So she is embarking on like, you know, using CBTI, specifically bedtime restriction to get better. And before we get to our email, nothing here is medical advice, as I always say, but just uh, a general comments and advice that I hope will be helpful to you, Kim, and anybody else tuning in now. Let's read this email that I got from Kim uh, one day ago. So Kim's writing, I continue to see uh, small improvements with sleep restriction therapy. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with this, it's, it's, it's spending less time in bed so that you have a stronger sleep drive that helps you sleep through. It's like a key uh, technique for, using, uh, for improving your, your sleep or treating insomnia rather. So she sees small improvements with that. I'm, I'm, I believe I'm definitely getting more sleep than I think I'm getting as I feel okay during the day, despite my short window of 5.5 hours. And that window is like, she's only spending five and a half hours in bed now, again, to get more solid sleep. And uh, overall came like the main thing I want to tell you here really is I'm very encouraged. You know, any improvement that you see like week one, week two, week three, week four, like, you know, fairly early on is something you should really like focus on, play up, like think about that because you are on the right track, you know? So I am very, very encouraged and I'll actually talk more about that in a second. But the other thing I want to comment on was that, I, I, you know, in clinic, I think that's one of the big like ahas, like one of the big insights that people get is like when I see them back after, let's say four weeks or six weeks or something like that of doing a bedtime restriction or sleep restriction is a lot of people are like, I'm sleeping pretty good now and I guess I only need six hours. It's like a big surprise. Now, here's the thing, like, yes, a lot of people do really well on, let's say, six hours, six and a half, seven hours, something like that. But a reason people often are surprised is that they think that they now suddenly only need six hours. But in reality, it's often that when they didn't have any problem sleeping, they didn't really think about sleep. They somehow overestimated, they thought they slept seven hours. But now that they're like very, very like aware, they notice, they realize that they only sleep six hours. But in reality, they probably always slept about six hours, you know? So just a little comment on that. Okay, um, let's read on here. It is still taking me one hour or more to fall asleep since I get uh, once I get into bed, despite the fact that I will be walking circles around my couch to stay awake prior to getting into bed. I am definitely not falling into deep sleep and I think I'm mostly in stage one and then I have a few dreams, so I assume I'm getting some REM sleep, which I have read is not uncommon to go straight into when you're sleep deprived. Will this pattern ever break eventually? So answer that last question. Yeah, I definitely think this pattern will break. I think, you know, I know three weeks is a long time, you know, battling insomnia like you're doing now, but yeah, I think you're on the right track. I think this, this definitely, this pattern will break. And um, a couple of things. So number one, for anybody except Kim here, check this out, Kim, is walking circles around her couch not to fall asleep at night, you know? And I think she is so dedicated, working so hard, is why she's seeing like little improvements. You know, a lot of people fall into this like, you know, are, aren't, aren't able to do it. Like they, they, they feel really tired, you know, it's 10 p.m. It's like, I gotta sit down, they sit down, and when they sit down, they're like, ah, oh, I just wanna close my eyes to rest a little bit and then, boom, they fall asleep, you know, it may only be 25 minutes, but that may be enough to then really disrupt your sleep. So Kim, you're doing really, really good. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really encouraged. Um, okay, so comment on that. And now sleep stages. So um, 
deep sleep is also called sleep, a stage three sleep. And that's considered kind of the most uh, rejuvenating, refreshing sleep. And the body really wants that, you know, meaning if you go, if you're sleep deprived, then most of your sleep will be stage three sleep. That's the body really wants to recover that sleep. So that's the one where you typically, if you're sleep deprived, you typically go straight into deep sleep, stage three sleep. Now, REM sleep, on the other hand, where we have like a lot of dreaming, that's circadianly driven, meaning it typically happens, no matter if you're sleep deprived or not, it typically happens, uh, you know, early morning, like 5 a.m. or, you know, mostly, mo most of it is there. So I think what's happening in your case, Kim, is more that um, you still have a lot of sleep apprehension, you know, you still have some sleep anxiety, you know, you're very aware of your sleep. So you're right, I think you fall into like a stage one sleep, and then you wake up maybe a little bit, so you back back into stage one. And what happens is we can dream in other, actually it's pretty common to dream in other sleep stages. Not only, only we don't only dream in REM sleep. So I think you're having some dreaming in this, in like stage one or stage two sleep. And the fact that you wake up so much makes you remember it. Most of us dream actually most of the night, but we don't remember it because we're asleep, you know? So I think what's happening to you is more a testament to you still have fragmented sleep. Um, all right, so I, 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 overall, Kim, very encouraged. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, please let me know how things are going. And if you, Kim, have any questions, anybody else any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment or email me, daniel at insomniainsight.co, and we'll see you back here, hopefully, very soon. Until then, bye-bye.